You're watching ITV News at 10. Well, here we are about a uh, quarter after 11 or so, and uh, still no mayor of Edmonton declared at this point. Let's find out. Take a look at the, at the leaderboard here. You're going to find out why, as you can see, Bill Smith and Jan Reimer neck and neck here pretty much for mayor of Edmonton. Now let's take a look at Ward 5. There you can see Larry Langley elected in that ward and Brent Mateson of Association to Save Keeler Road fame in second place right now. Lillian Starozic pretty far back in the polls there. Um, incumbent Lillian Starozic edged out of another term, a disappointing night, no doubt. How is that for you at this point? Well, not terribly. This is not devastating. I have a very rich and full life, and I have offered my services. I have worked hard for Residents Award 5, and they have made their choice. And I'm sure that Larry Langley and Brent Mason will serve them well as well. And how big an influence do you think the Keeler Road debate was in the results we're seeing tonight? I don't know. It's, it's very difficult to tell. I, I think that the referendums brought more voters out, but I don't know that they necessarily changed the results of the vote. Certainly Keeler Road allowed Mr. Mateson to have a higher profile. Um, Larry Langley has always enjoyed a high profile. He's someone that we've all uh, enjoyed watching on television for years. I, I think that it's, it's simply a case of, of uh, voters wanting a change and they've expressed their views and I respect them. Jan Reimer has uh, now just uh, taken the podium speaking to her supporters. Let's head down to headquarters now. Hot, and who knows, it might be another two hours, but I did want to say a few words to you tonight. I want to first of all say that there's been no greater honor than to serve as the mayor of Edmonton for the last six years. And I personally want to thank the voters who've supported me, not just tonight, but over the past years. And I want to say that I'm so proud of this campaign, and I'm so proud of every single one of you in this room. You've been absolutely tremendous. We have run a campaign the way we said we would. Run on issues, not on personalities. And we put Edmonton first every day of this campaign. And this campaign team that we have here put a campaign together in record time with limited resources, and you all worked so hard. It was truly a people's campaign, as it always would be with the kind of people that we have here in the room tonight. You know, it was not that long ago when I announced my plans to run right here, and I said it would be a horse race, and that is indeed what's happened here tonight. And it's only because, though, there are people who are willing to serve, who are ready to provide choice, that democracy works. And I think if we look in retrospect, we know that if we look to the past, we have left a strong legacy, a city in strong financial shape, and one of the best cities in Canada in which to do business. are a city of compassion and if there's anything that I am proud of it is that legacy a city that lives and cares for its people there were six other candidates for mayor along with Bill Smith and I'd like to congratulate all of the candidates for their campaigns to those members of council who were defeated, you have my appreciation for the contributions that you have made. We all know that public life is never that easy. Tonight, there are many people that I want to thank. Many of you have been here day after day, and I really appreciate all that you have done. I want to thank the thousands of people who made our campaign possible in big ways and in small ways whether it's taking that lawn sign, mailing in a few dollars, or coming to help on the phone. And I also want to thank my family, who has stood by me. I've got my husband, my son, Jeffrey, my daughter, Megan, my mom, and my dad, who have made such a tremendous difference. And finally, 
there's one final message that I'd like to leave with, and that is never underestimate Edmonton. Never underestimate the character, the values, or the resilience of this great city, and never underestimate the compassion of our community or what we can do when we all unite and stand together. So thank you for your support, and thank you for being here tonight. All right, with that, we are going to take a short break, but stay with us, we'll be right back. She's of average height and average weight. Yet, there's absolutely nothing average about her. She's what happens when a company believes safety isn't one thing, it's everything. And she is the first and only crash test dummy with that special glow. The company is General Motors. AGT's long distance prices are at their lowest ever, clear across the country. Just 99 cents or less for three minutes anywhere in Canada. Simple, reliable long distance and guaranteed savings only from AGT. 99 cents or less for three minutes anywhere in Canada, evenings and weekends with an AGT savings plan. AGT long distance prices are at their lowest ever in Alberta and Canada. Call us today. Rush to sell a home. The smart choice is Remax. Remax Associates across North America average more transactions than other real estate agents. So if you've got a home on the range that you want to sell, Remax can really turn up the heat. Yep, that Remax. It's the fastest draw on the block. Introducing the all-new Eat More Cow. Shot. Oh, What's with the camel? I don't believe this. It's new Eat More Caramel. Read the script. It says loaded with peanuts and chewy caramel. And not too sweet tasting people. I don't see a camel in the script. I know it's difficult to understand the difference between camel and caramel. Perhaps if you're a total idiot. New Eat More Caramel. It's new and it's caramel. Somebody get this camel away from me now. Welcome back. Well, right now we're going to head down to Jerry Bellica, who is standing by at Bill Smith's election headquarters. Well, we've been listening down here to the comments from Jan Reimer. There was talk that Jan had conceded. Of course, she did not concede just yet. And the words from Bill Smith so far to his constituents and to his supporters here have been not yet. Uh, it could be a long wait. It must be frustrating, Bill. Well, it is frustrating, and I'm sure it's frustrating for the uh, listening audience, the viewing, the viewing audience, and all the people here, and certainly all the people in Reimer's camp. Uh, uh, I, I just don't understand why this should be taking so long and we still have seven polls to go yet so it's still anybody's race the, the advanced polls being counted by hand uh, one wonders why they, they hadn't already been counted you were wondering about that well I'm not sure about the process but I'm the question I would have is uh, uh, they should have started counting them at 8 o'clock and it's now uh, 1130 so uh, that's three and a half hours so I don't I don't understand uh, but there, there, there could be possibly a, a good explanation for it. I've heard 9,000 different rumors, none of which are substantiated. Yeah, that seems to be your mood tonight is it isn't over until it's over. <laughs> Who said that? Yogi Berra? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's still close. It's still anybody's race. And uh, I'm sure Mayor Reimer is looking at it the same way I am. It's, uh, it's that close. Seven polls to go. What can you say? Bill, thanks very much. We'll be checking back with you through the night as we get final results and keep you up to date as well. Back right. to you guys. Thank you, Jerry. And thanks, the waiting Jerry. game continues. And speaking of results and polls, let's head over to Ross at the Decision Desk with uh, more results. Ross. Well, Gordon Jacklin, there's a great deal of interest in our city tonight. Just exactly how this is breaking down for the mayoral race in ward by ward and who's leading in each one and how many polls are left to report. So let's take a look at that. Let's start with Ward 1 in the mayoral race. There you have it. As it stands right now, overall, the city, it's neck and neck. Bill Smith and Jan Reimer, 36%, according to the polls that are reporting support. Uh, that was uh, 165 of 172 polls. But we can tell you right now, there are three polls in Ward 1. We're still waiting for one more poll, and Bill Smith has a comfortable lead there. In Ward 2, one more poll to report, and again, Bill Smith is in the lead. 
Ward 3, again, Bill Smith has a healthy lead in Ward 3, and we're still waiting for one more poll. Ward 4, all the polls are reporting there, and Jan Reimer is strongly supported in Ward 4. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. In Ward 5, it's very much a neck-and-neck -neck race. Uh, Jan Reimer has a little bit more support in that ward, and we still have two more, more polls to hear from. And in Ward 6, Bill Smith has a 700-vote lead thereabouts, and uh, one more poll, or two more polls report, in Ward 6. So that's how it breaks down in the wards in the, in the entire city. Gordon Jackie. All right, thank you, Roz. Let's Thanks, take a look at uh, one other ward that uh, the folks have been watching with great mm -hmm. interest here in Edmonton, and that, of course, is Ward 4. And there we've got uh, Michael Fair. That was Michael Fair's ward. He has been, he is back in, the incumbent. Uh, Jim Taylor, though, has replaced Tucker Gomberg who has dropped back there. So it was a close for a couple hours tonight for Michael Fair, kind of touch and go, but just a few moments ago, Michael acknowledged victory in Ward 4. Yes, it's fun. Um, so, Mr. Fair, tell me, uh, tell me how you're feeling now. It was a little bit of a long night. Uh, oh, where are you going to take, take it from here? Yeah, well, it's been, an, it's been a very exciting night, um, and, and we're still uh, waiting for the advance call to come in. I'm ahead right now in, in second place, and I, it's where I expect to be tomorrow morning. So what is going to be a, a really important issue for you to take, uh, to take forth in the next term? Oh, um, no question. That dealing with a number of, of local community issues to strengthen and make our neighborhood safer and stronger. Uh, was there a point tonight where you were uh, getting a little concerned about how the votes were rolling in? Uh, the election's never over until all the votes are in, and, and um, there's nothing like an exciting election for everyone, including myself. You're going to be one of uh, very few old, familiar faces on council. How is that going to feel? Be very challenging. I suspect very exciting. And I suspect we're in for some changes and some new things, and that's good. Well, it certainly has been an exciting election, a, a tight race, mm. to say the least. Let's head down to Pat Kroskoff now at City Hall. And, Pat, any idea as to why this is taking so long? Well, at this point, it seems that the holdup is due to the advanced polls. Now, usually they're called advanced polls because they're counted uh, before the rest of the ballots are counted. But, of course, this year we told you about an ink problem on the ballots that were distributed, first of all. And because of the ink problem, those ballots were not, be able to, were not being able to be counted by computers. As a result, all of those ballots that were done in advance are being counted by hand, and that process is continuing tonight and that's why we're having such a delay we've been speaking with city officials they say that counting is going on tonight we have no word yet on when the results will be in so i guess the uh, race for the mayor's chair is resting in the balance at this point you got that right all right well, we're just going to wait and see what happens thank you pat you're welcome all right well there are some new faces uh, from ward five let's take a look at the leaderboard there uh brent mason has defeated lillian starozik you know it's been a tight race and mason is all relieved that it's all over and he's looking at getting down to work. Brent, your reaction to tonight's victory? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to working with uh, City Council and turning Edmonton into the place that we, we love and have always known it to have been a great place, and it is a great place, and we're going to even make it even greater. It seems that this has been a neck and neck battle all evening, a seesaw race between the three candidates in Ward 5. What were some of the feelings that were going through your mind as the numbers were coming in? <laughs> a little bit of pins and needles all the way. Oh yes, it's 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 been a, a, a close race, and uh, you know people have worked very hard, and, and and I really thank the people that have worked so hard in my campaign. And you know this this started a long time ago, and it's going to keep going. The Kila Road issue, I know that that's been part of your platform. Uh, you saw the numbers come in and I'm sure you've heard the results. What kind of reaction do you have? Well, Keeler Road is a symptom of a much larger problem and I think the council that we're going to have now will solve the big problem and that's the way we're going to have to address it. And before we go to break, let's take a look at our mayoralty race right now. And there you can see Bill Smith, Jan Reimer in a tight race and uh, sort of at a standstill right now as we wait for those remaining polls to uh, come in. And John Ramsey in third place, Brad Chicknita, and Lance White. Pins and needles right Pins now. Pins and needles. <laughs> You're not right about that. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back.